All right, so as previously mentioned on my last video, port hertz and what to tune a box to for a specific speaker sent me down a wild rabbit hole. So this is what I've learned. It's probably not the end all be all, but this is what I learned. Uh, the tips to kind of get you started, get you pointed in the right direction. And if there's people that are smarter than me on speaker building, which I'm sure there's an absolute monster load of you, leave comments uh, to the people that are watching this video and let's help everybody else out in figuring this stuff out. So to get started, you're gonna need a little program called WinISD. It's easy to find, just do a Google search for it. There's uh, free downloads all over the place. So once you got your WinISD, we're going to click on New Project, and that'll bring up your speakers. And we'll find our driver. And don't worry, if your driver isn't listed here, you can always import this thing by just searching for the model number of the driver in a Google search. You can get the uh, project files for WinISD pretty easily. Anyway, so in the case of the one I'm gonna show you today, this is the driver that I was working on. That's the one on the bottom there. And uh, we'll click on next. And we're just going to take whatever it gives us as a default here, go next. It's suggesting a vented box based on a calculation. Don't remember that one off the top of my head right now, but there is a calculation for that. Click on next again. Lose For uh, choose the alignment, just leave it whatever it's default. Next, and we'll call it exactly that, default, with an F. And we're gonna create that. Now this gives us our baseline and we can kind of see this is what the expected transfer is on a box that has a 0.761 at 30.45 hertz. This is what they consider the ideal with the quasi Butterworth alignment. Uh, don't know what that is. Vaguely know what that is, not enough to talk about it. But essentially this will give you your optimal sound quality. Now, any time you change anything here, you're gonna be sacrificing some sound quality and that's gonna be debatable as well. <laughs> as we can see with the conclusion, when I get further along with the video, everything is a disclaimer. Audio is so subjective. Anyway, this is what I've learned. I'll try to keep it at that. So there's your default. We're gonna go click on new again and then we're going to make one that we're gonna monkey around with. So choosing the same driver, next. And again, all defaults, and we'll call this uh, times two. And we're gonna create that. So the first rule of thumb, don't go more than double of whatever your suggested square feet is. So this one is 0.761. So just to play around here, let's go with uh, 1.25. And the reason I'm doing that is I've actually got this driver and it's sitting there inside the box so we can kind of see what this all does to it. So immediately you can see a curve change and we get a better performing F3 which is now closer to about uh, I'd say 27 hertz instead of what was that 34, 35 somewhere on there anyway you can see the F3 moves we get a little bit of a bump and we sacrifice a little bit in the uh, like 50 to 100 hertz range, but it's not much, it's not even a decibel. So we get a bump in our base. That's pretty sweet. Okay. So let's play around, let's just go extreme here. Let's go four times the amount or just double of this one. So we'll make another new project. So we're gonna go to SB Acoustics again, select the same driver. Next, leaving the same as Vented. That's the same, and we're gonna go X4. This is not gonna be exactly four times, but just to get you guys the gist of what's going on here. So now we're gonna go 2.5. Now already we see a massive bump up in the range of about 30 Hertz. So this to you bass heads, and I'm one of them, uh, you're going, whoa, this is awesome. Let's just build a box that's super huge. Unfortunately, anytime we do this, there is a sacrifice. And although nothing shows up here that we can see as far as sound quality goes, anytime the box gets bigger, it's not gonna be that really punchy, 
the it's the punchy base that I really like, it's not going to be that you're going to lose some. So you want to kind of do the trade off. And for me, that trade off is about two times, maybe just a little bit under two times, where I feel I still got great sound quality, get a little bit of a bump, some free bass essentially. So now that we got those uh, kind of, we got our three parameters in there. Next things we want to look at here are cone excursion. And with our default settings, you can see all three bars there. Nothing really to complain about. Then we'll look at our rear port air velocity. Now this is going to be very important. So whatever our box frequency is, when ISD is automatically going to adjust this vent length based on the port that we choose. So the first thing I did when I built that box uh, is I had just a 1.3875 uh, or whatever 3 8 is. So let's just go 375. And you'll see you got a vent length on a 0.4, sorry, on a four times the size box of 0.71, which is basically the thickness of the material I was working with. But look at what it does to the port air velocity. That's not good. Um, some around the 17, 16 ish range here. Anytime you cross that threshold, you're going to hear uh, port wind noise or puffing, huffing, whatever you want to call that. You don't want that. And keep in mind as well, when ISD is using a default here signal of one watt. Now, when are we ever going to be feeding our subwoofer one watt? Never. Or our woofer for that matter. So the other thing to do is put this to about half of whatever your speaker is rated at. Now, because I've kind of done a little bit of an oddity thing here, these two are on the same crossover. So I've got to take the lower of the two. This is a 60 watt speaker, I do believe. So we're going to put in 30 watts. And we'll do the same for all of them. So we're comparing the same thing across all of our curves. All right, so now we've got a decent benchmark and we got a decent setup, but you can kind of see quickly what a vent difference makes. So clearly that's not appropriate. The downside to just going, hey, let's go with a seven or eight inch vent or a six inch or a seven inch. Notice what happens to the vent length. This gets just silly big. So if we're building a speaker box, that's going to have a 0.761 cubic feet and we are using a four inch vent for example building a 45.21 inch vent inside that box uh, it's going to be more vent than box the good news is is you can go down and you can keep going down here until your vent gets up to about the 1617 mark there so 2.5, woohoo, bingo. Now we only need 16.83 inches of vent to make that work. If we go down to two, you can see that's a problem. We're gonna start getting port noise. At three, pretty good. Now here's the other thing. If we go back to our transfer magnitude and we take a look at kind of changing the frequency of this box, so if this was all about sound quality, I'd leave it at 30.45, but it's not. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to keep bumping this puppy up until I see a three. So right about there. So at 40 hertz, that one's going to be there. So let's put this one to do the same here at 35, 36. So this one hits it at 36. So we already see some of the effect of the different size has on the box or has on the speaker. Let's change this one as well. Uh, so this is probably 29. Yeah, that's pretty close. So now we got a pretty good look at what the how that affects the curves, the different box size. And now it's essentially about choosing what works best for you. And you can see that this is already the times two. If I did 1.4 and 35, might be even better. Yeah, that gives a really nice middle of the road curve at 35 hertz. And the vent, 
if I go with three inch pipe, 8.87, that's not bad. That's easy, easy to manufacture that into a box. And now if I go back to the rear pork for air velocity, it's a little on the high side. Hmm. Can we change that by changing the hertz? If we drop it down, we probably can. We can, or we're going to have to build a bigger port. So back to 36 and 1.25 was the size of that box actually is, and we're underneath the 17. So we're right at the edge of it with the box that I've built, and that kind of works. So the vent. Actually, I think it's 3.25 in there. Puts us well within our range. Anyway, even if we're at 3 inch, we're underneath our 17. Don't ever cross a 17. That's the holding number. Make all the vents the same. 3. 3 doesn't work on the 4 times box. Interesting, but there the box is already so massive, we could change that down too, right? So 4 or even 3.5 probably would do the trick here already. Three and a half does uh, does the trick just barely, and it's nine point seven five, so that's very realistic. You can also change your vents right away to the quantity, but notice again, as soon as we do that, it's the same, get the same effect on our vent length. So be mindful of that, and you can do the same thing again here. Bump the vents down. Uh, let's change that back so that we're kind of comparing apples to apples here. The next thing we're going to want to look at, so now we kind of have a baseline for our speakers and we got a transfer magnitude of somewhere around, this is about 40 hertz, and I'm good with that. The F3 drops to about uh, just above 30, which I'm also good with. I didn't know I was good with it. If you want to know more about that, uh, that'll be the next video on uh, finding the hertz of your speaker or of an existing box, for example. Anyway, back to this. Uh, so this is probably a pretty good curve based on what I like to listen to. It's just under two times the size, so I should still have great sound quality and I don't have to worry about uh, losing too much bass as far as threshold. Last but not least, cone excursion becomes important as well. So anytime you're building a box, this is something you should look at. And this is based on the parameters that you put in or the uh, speaker that you've imported, excuse me, into WinISD. So these are well within range underneath uh, 20 hertz. So if we go underneath 20 hertz sound, the cone is going to be moving farther than it should. We're laughing. This puts everything nicely in range for what we want to listen to. So what's the ideal? There's no perfect answer. If you want sound quality, stick with a default, build that. Done. Next. If you want the best compromise and on the low end, you're probably not going to hear that bit of a difference on a double time of this, this bump here. And you're going to gain some more uh, bass. And in this case, it's right where the punchy bass always is. And I eat that up. Right in about the uh, 40 hertz, 36, 30 whatever 40 45 somewhere in there so this is what i like so this is how i chose the box that i finally ended up building after many renditions so that's what's sitting there now you can see that the port is much bigger than what it was in the past anyway hopefully that helps you guys pick out the right hertz for the right driver if you don't have the default driver in WinISD like I say just a quick google search with a model number and WinISD will get you those files you copy them over into the folder and bada bing bada boom you can use it in WinISD and you can very quickly come up with parameters that are useful for you hopefully that was helpful if you don't know exactly what bass frequencies you like or how to find the uh, tuning of a speaker box maybe you've heard that you really like i will put that up in the next video as soon as that's done